thanks to our sponsor KiwiCo for partnering with us on today's video. More on them at the end of the video. In today's video, we're going to try to make the biggest ball of marshmallow clay that we've ever seen. Guys, if you've never seen model magic, sometimes called marshmallow clay, it's pretty fun and interesting stuff. It's just sold as a kid's toy, basically. And model magic is this brand of it. I think there are probably some knockoff brands as well. It's like this super lightweight, almost a foam type of clay. You, you know, you can see that it does squish around. It's moldable, it's shapeable, but it also has some springiness and you can tear it open and you can kind of get a sense of the texture on the inside. It does get called marshmallow clay because it's fairly similar to the density and texture of a marshmallow, although fortunately for me, not quite as sticky. Here's the basic idea. Model Magic is a fun, lightweight type of clay with the approximate texture of marshmallows. We wanted to see what would happen if we got about 14 pounds of it and put it all together. It's an air dry clay. If you leave it outside of a sealed container for a while, it will dry off, although it will retain its light spongy texture for the most part. It's fun to play with. It's generally quite safe because of how squishy and soft and bouncy it is. And it has a lot of different uses. You can just play with it. You can sculpt with it. I know that the cosplay world enjoys it. You can make things like horns and parts of armor decorations. And because it's so lightweight and soft, it works out pretty well. We got this large variety pack that has 75 one ounce packs in it. And that right there is probably the most I've ever seen in one spot, but it still didn't seem like enough. So we got two more. So we have 225 ounces of this stuff. Our cameraman made this lovely little cup in sort of a spiral clay pot method. It's had time to dry. It's got some squish to it. Okay, well, we're already at the most of this model magic I've ever seen in one place. I haven't tried combining it all together. I haven't tried combining really any of it together yet, but I'm already enjoying this. I'm gonna see how well the colors mix. Although you can mold it and squish it and stretch it and stuff, it doesn't blend the same way some types of clay do. So we're gonna see if it ends up actually turning orange or if we just have layers on layers on layers. That is some very cool patterns we've got going there. As I've been mixing, I've been trying to like smear it together to really get a mix more than just layers. And you can see that, that is starting to work. There we go. That does work pretty nice. I feel compelled to make the other colors that we don't have now though. Got red, orange, yellow, missing green, missing purple. I'll try and see what I can get. So this one, I've just been cutting it and smashing it together. So I cut it, stack it, and then smash it a little bit. But I haven't done any smearing, so you've still got pretty defined lines between everything. There's not really a lot of green showing up yet. Now let's see what happens if I start doing the smearing thing. There we go. We are definitely starting to get some green in there. I mean, it's not terribly different from if I had just kept doing layers and layers and layers and layers. If you get close enough, you can still see some very, very thin strands, but I do think it's actually starting to turn green, not just yellow and blue layered together. This is actually really cool. If you get close on this, this one I haven't done any smearing, but I have done a lot of layers. So you can see that there are some very, very fine lines, but still clearly separated, even in these places where it looks pretty close together, you're starting to see purple. There are still individual layers to some degree. So one other thing I thought was interesting, this cup that I showed you that our cameraman made, when I picked it up this morning, I broke the handle off, and so I tried gluing it back on, and I used super glue, and I was actually amazed at how well that worked. So if Mark's okay with it, I'm actually gonna tear the bottom of this off, he's nodding, and I'm gonna see how well the glue puts it back together. So here goes. Oh, that popped off pretty easy. Uh, like immediately is bonding it back together. Like I can still see that parts of the glue are liquid on the outside, but all of the places where the foam was touching glue and foam, like that's already stuck back together. So that's kind of cool. So it does break fairly easily if you try, but it also goes back together pretty easily if it broke. One of the main things that I definitely want to do is to just smush all of this together, but I do have a little bit more I want to do before that. So I want to try freezing it in liquid nitrogen, see what happens, a couple of our usuals. I want to try burning it, see how flammable it is. You know, it's so light and fluffy that I want to try putting it in a vacuum chamber and see if it puffs up. We're just gonna see what happens if we drop this in. Surprise, surprise, it makes the liquid nitrogen boil. Like everything does.
bouncy. Distinctly not bouncy. I think it still didn't freeze all the way through. So we got like parts where it's cracking and then the inside is still squishy enough. Let's try and freeze it again a bit. That's more what I expected to happen. That is kind of weird though, like as I'm holding it and it warms up in my hand, it does just return to like a foam squishy texture. So it's weird for it to go from like completely rigid and solid to just like squishy, malleable. Throw I think one of each color into here. The orange is growing. Oh, it was, and then it shrunk back down. That was weird. It puffed up and then collapsed a little bit. Like it grew, not a lot, maybe 10 to 15% larger, but then it just like gave up and collapsed back down. Our vacuum chamber needs an overhaul, but I am gonna let all the air back in as quickly as I can to see if it shrinks visibly at all. I think it did a little bit. Like I said, the orange did puff up a little bit while it was in there and then like it puffed and then like collapsed back down a bit, which I thought was pretty interesting. Texture afterward feels the same, but honestly, something about the stuff that was in the vacuum, like the surface feels like it's, I mean, these have now been sitting out for, you know, half an hour, something like that. The surface, the ones we put in the vacuum chamber don't feel like they dried out as much. And it's not that they've been in there avoiding drying out this whole time. I just put them in and pulled the vacuum like a couple minutes ago, but it seems to have changed something about the surface texture of them just a little bit. I'm gonna pull this piece. Listen, that sounds like glass. This is a kind of clay, but it's not ceramic. Okay, we're gonna let that warm back up all the way and we're gonna see if it gets any of its stretchiness back. Speaking of warming things up, gotta do this test. Well, that burned immediately. It is burning slightly green. I thought that was gonna smell a lot worse. Honestly, it smells similar to paper burning. Test how good of a heat shield this is. So I'm gonna flatten a piece out. I can put my fingers behind and I'm gonna slowly move with my finger behind it. I'm gonna move it up in front of the flame and see how well it protects me. So my finger so far has not felt it. I actually want to start over a different method because the heat that's like bouncing off of it, like this part of my hand was getting too hot and I flinched away a couple times because like I'd be holding the clay and then this finger would start to burn. So I want to try again. I'm going to flatten it out and just hold it over my hand and blow torch it that direction. See if that works. It is getting hot now. So it did start to get hot on the back of my fingers and there's like moisture on them. So I think what happened is some of the water content of this clay actually started to steam and get blown down onto my hands. But I had that sustained burning on there for probably almost a minute before it got uncomfortably hot. And it, it didn't burn through. I think like I was saying, I think it was just steam. Look at that, you can see that only the very top layer of that is actually burned and most of it going through there is still just fine. All right, I think it's about time we start squishing things together here. I'm just gonna try and make a ball. I don't want it like all white, all red, all yellow, all blue though, so I'm kinda gonna go like one at a time from each of them until it's all smooshed together. All right, we've got all of this smooshed and rolled into one big old ball. This should be about a 14 pound ball. Oh, and like, for its size, it's lightweight, but like it's big, obviously, and it's big and solid. So even though it is like liftable, tossable a little bit, it is still heavy because it's solid all the way through. This is very, very lightweight for clay. I worked as a sculptor for four years using oil-based clay. A ball this size of that stuff, I don't think I'd be able to lift. It would have been like, at least I wouldn't have been able to lift like this, maybe like off the ground using my legs kind of thing, but this would have been like 100 pounds. And I keep rolling it around because its own weight is definitely enough to deform it. Like, I'll just let it sit here for a second and you can already watch it starting to slump and I'll roll it and you'll be able to see the flat point underneath it where it's just already flattened and squished itself down. So its own weight is definitely still squishing it. I think to, to get it to stay in this shape, you'd have to keep rolling it around, not just for like a little while, <laughs> because the outside of it would dry, but the inside layers wouldn't really dry very much. So I think you'd have to keep it rolling around for like 
weeks or months if you wanted it to actually dry to a point where it stayed in this shape forever. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. But I do wanna test a couple things like how well does it bounce? So I'm just gonna come over to in front of the desk and do a bounce test with it. Hey, it bounced. Not as much and it didn't keep bouncing and it did flatten itself out a little bit where it hit, but it bounced. A little bit of bounce. Okay, now I wanna cut this in half because like we had all those cool marbling patterns from making the other smaller stuff and I wanna see if we got some cool patterns in this. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, nope, that looks awesome. Oh, I like that. Oh, that looks fun. Now I have Callie's concrete bust and I'm gonna just use this to smoosh down into here. Here I've got some molten gallium. We'll pour this in. I am a little curious. When I tried this in Silly Putty, the weight of the gallium was so great that it smushed everything out to the side. There's a very good chance that will happen here as well, but I'm still gonna try it. All right, we've let the gallium cool down all the way and I'm happy to say it did not spill out anywhere, so that's pretty cool. All right, it's not a perfect casting, but it's actually not bad. I think it did flatten out a little bit. We're not looking at the same profile shape quite as much. It sunk in in some places, especially where it was thicker. It was heavier, so it like squished out profile. But we did get a casting, like that's clearly part of a face. If there is something else you guys think we should try with this clay, we'd probably be happy to try it out. It's fun stuff. Thanks again to the sponsor of this video, KiwiCo, who we've partnered with to encourage you to keep learning even when you're at home. They make awesome steam-based kits like the Spin Art Machine, which lets you make beautiful pieces of art with a spin machine. Everything you need comes included in the box. You can put it together and you can make beautiful pieces of art. To get your first month free, head down to the description and click the link, or go to kiwico.com slash TKOR and get started today. Guys, that's not all you know. We've always got more for you to see. Click the box up at the top to check out our most recent video and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.